don't want you to be poor and under this apostolic and prophetic watch you will not be poor in the name of Jesus you are not interested allow your neighbor receive in peace I owe you I owe you under God and by grace your holistic build-up and formation which includes your excelling in every area of life I am very unapologetic about your becoming that you must be an expression of Christ in its entirety living a life that represents dignity and wholesomeness not just spiritual at the expense of your finances are we together or financially uh, capable at the expense of your relationship with Christ in this place you will find together everything that helps you to become a true portrait of the kind of believer Jesus died for now it's up to you to pick some and reject some as your faith and conviction may allow but as far as the meal that leaves this altar to you is concerned it was designed to build you holistically and that without compromise you believe that say amen so for some of you who came asking questions God when will you change my financial story God is telling you that there are many factors and forces responsible for helping the believer thrive especially in light of the times that we live in one of it is your heart for God your heart for his program hallelujah are we blessed many of us are part of this vision you don't even have the ministry's account number you've never been interested because it's none of your business all we are doing is to come and receive you won't grow that way i'm telling you honestly you won't grow that way it has never happened to anybody that way no you won't grow that way not financially not in wisdom you will walk under a, a painful close heaven trust me on this i love you too much to not tell you the truth i'm already helping someone diagnose the mystery behind the financial tragedies around your life and sometimes what you are doing your value and whatever may be fine but mysteriously you will still return back to begging mysteriously because you see your value only makes sense in the world of men not in the world of spirits what makes sense in the world of spirits is obedience and covenants not value value is only applicable to the world of men you don't meet spirits and say i'm intel an intelligent person that factor does not count in the spirit value is only profitable in the world of men you are transacting and exchanging value between one person to another and it gives you the basis to be rewarded whether financially or any other expression of reward but in the realm of the spirit what counts is not value in terms of your transactional value what counts is your compliance to laws and principles and the covenants that authorize the realm of the spirit to treat you with graciousness or to treat you harshly this is what defines our reality so there are people who physically they are valuable physically they are excellent but they do not know why they still receive the lot of lazy people they still receive the lot of unproductive people the reason is because they have not sorted the realm of the spirit and yet they are trying to transact value so the shop is there the mall is there your job is there promotion is even there but mysteriously your economic state does not change in spite of all the advantages you are surrounded by helpers they will never attend to you the moment you receive your arrears there will be trouble that matches the arrears you receive till it plunges you back what you need to correct is not your value what you need to correct is something a default in the realm of the spirit there's something wrong with your covenant work there is something wrong with obedience are you learning already I forbid you from being poor I say to you again from the depth of my heart you will not beg and that though your beginning be small in the name of Jesus God will use you to surprise everybody who has known you before now when you are poor you cannot take care of your children when you are poor you cannot count as far as the program of God is concerned in terms of your givings and your contribution poverty is directly connected to many health issues 
You wake up and you are thinking of rent, thinking of this. I told you, when you are poor, you will tell lies. When you are poor, you will steal. Are we together? What's the third one? There are three things you do when you are poor. You will tell lies, you will steal, and you will compromise. Not because you are bad. It is the effect of that state. If poverty had no effect on your relationship with God, if it had no effect on your well-being, then you will not have a problem with it. But because it has a very negative effect on your relationship with God. Hallelujah. I will always tell you, one of the reasons why I'm able to do what God has called me to do effectively is because back at home now, in my house, there is food on my table. My table is not empty. It's part of the motivation behind my preaching. I can shout with all my energy because I know I can go back home and find tea and bread on my table. It will be unfair for me to leave tea and bread on my table and come and shout before you here and not ensure that you also have tea and bread on your table. Are we together? Yes. As for me, there's already tea and bread on my table. And there's no devil's hand can reach that table. That you can be sure. Thank you for staying to the end of this message. But before you leave, I want to tell you a story. There was a father who has two sons. And so he sent two of his sons to the farm, like to go and harvest yam. So he called them both and sent them. The elderly one says he is going to go, that he is going to like go on the errands. But the younger one says he is not going to go. And so they left the presence of the man and behold the one that says he will go to the farm does not actually went but the one who says he was not going to go at a point he thought within himself and said my father has been very responsible for me so i will go so he changed his mind and went so i want to ask among these two sons who actually does the will of the Father. It is the younger one. So as you have listened to this message, it's not about listening alone. If you're listening, um, probably you feel stirred up. But later on, the zeal, the passion that you had when you were listening to this message dies and you do not apply this message. It means the time that you dedicated listening to, to this message was a waste. So it is not about what you share alone. It's not about the messages that you listen to alone. It is more of what you take out of th those messages and then apply to your daily lives to make you um, better. So I do hope and I pray that this message will transform your life, will turn your life around.